So I did a video the other day where I explained the basic guide to giving your leopard gecko supplements. In this video I'll attempt to explain what all these supplements do and hopefully you'll have a clear picture of why giving your gecko vitamins and minerals is so important. So let's start with calcium. Like in humans, calcium is needed to build and maintain bone structure. It is particularly important for hatchlings, juveniles and ovulating or gravid females during breeding season, though adults that aren't producing eggs still require calcium. The amount of calcium absorbed into the body is regulated by phosphorus and by vitamin D3. Phosphorus is needed to obtain energy from carbohydrates and fats and for protein production. Though it's beneficial to your gecko, too much of it is actually bad as it stops the absorption of calcium. Now for vitamin D3. Vitamin D is a group of steroid hormones. It also has a role in regulating phosphorus levels. It is required to absorb calcium from the intestine. Vitamin D3 is produced when a precursor molecule, dehydroclostrol, in the skin is exposed to sunlight. It is then converted to its biologically active form, dihydroxycholecalciferols via a two-step process which occurs within the liver and kidneys. Since vitamin D3 is fat-soluble, meaning it gets stored in the liver and fat cells, too much vitamin D3 is toxic. It can also lead to overabsorption of calcium, leading to calcium intoxication. Obviously, different species of geckos require different amounts of vitamins and minerals, but since we're talking about leopard geckos, I will look at their diet in particular. A leopard gecko's diet should require a low calcium phosphorus ratio. So for every part phosphorus, there should be 1.1 part calcium. So let's look at some calcium phosphorus ratios in some common feeder insects. Dubia roaches, 1 to 3. Crickets, 1 to 4. Mealworms, 1 to 8. And waxworms, 1 to 13. You can look these up online and sometimes these will vary from one study to another but what I have found is each test produces similar if not the same results as I've just mentioned. Anyway as you can see it's almost impossible to provide an ideal calcium phosphorus ratio without supplementing. So to sum it all up if your gecko doesn't get vitamin D3 the body will not be able to regulate the phosphorus intake therefore it will not be able to absorb calcium so bones will become weak and spongy leading to metabolic bone disease. If there's no calcium there's nothing to absorb and once again the bones just go to mush. If the phosphorus outweighs the calcium e.g. if you don't dust feeder insects with calcium any natural calcium found in the feeder insects will be blocked from being absorbed into the body. If there's too much vitamin D3, like if you buy a pot of calcium with added D3, then eventually too much will be stored in the liver and the fat cells. Calcium will be overly absorbed, so there's a chance your gecko could succumb to calcium intoxication. This may only happen over a long period of time if you just keep using calcium with added D3. Also keep in mind that other vitamins and minerals are required. These usually can be found in reptile multivitamins. In layman's terms, if the correct supplements aren't provided, everything goes downhill. So now you know what everything is doing inside your gecko's body, why supplementing is so important, and why things like calcium with added D3 isn't really ideal. I hope this has cleared things up for you. If you want to check out more information about products or how often you need to give them to your geckos, check out my previous video on the guide to leopard gecko supplements. Thank you very much for watching.